you guys i hope you're doing well thank you i had to kind of like this damn eucalyptus but it's not trying to light all right you guys this is going to be um an astrology q a uh, just questions that you might have for me regarding astrology. Um, as you guys know, I'm a 13 sign sidereal astrologer, so I don't fuck with that Western shit. It's cool and all, but it's oversaturated. If you want a Western reader, there are plenty of them out there. I don't look to debate with motherfuckers about this shit. There's no need to debate because facts are facts. When I say the sun is in Virgo today, I can literally show you that the sun is literally in Virgo. So you telling me that somebody's a Libra doesn't mean shit to me. That's your interpretation. My interpretation is different. It's cool. We don't have to agree. That's the great thing about the world is we don't have to agree on shit. <laughs> Everybody can have a different perspective, live and let live. You know what I mean? Um, I don't go on 12 sign astrologers uh, fucking Instagrams and tell them what to do, what to believe. So please respect my beliefs and we'll be fine. Um, so I've been studying astrology, as you guys know, since I was like seven or eight, but I got into 13 side astrology officially um, in about 2015, 2014. That's when I finally accepted it. I knew about it for a while, but I just, of course, like most people, I'm. you can't tell me I'm not a Leo. What's up, Tony? you know, a lot of pride and ego. So it took a lot of soul searching and a lot of crazy things happen in my life for me to really just convert over and to just learn a different perspective. So that's why I'm opening up more with it. Um, this is something I've been doing for a while. I've always been 13 signs astrology, so it was never a secret. Um, but astrology is my first love and it's what I feel like I'm better at in my opinion. If you guys think I'm super accurate with tarot, Y'all ain't seen me bust down a chart, okay? Y'all ain't seen me bust down a chart. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get into y'all questions really quick and see what's up. Okay, so the first one, do you need to know what time you're born to know your placements? Not your placements, but your rising sign and your house rulers. You need to know exactly what time you were born to get an accurate uh, reading of who your rising sign is and who rules your certain houses. Okay, so I really don't like to do charts without the time of birth. I will do it, but it's I, I don't like it. Um, I can tell you certain things, of course, but I can't get as accurate without the uh, rising. I resonate most definitely with Vedic Sidereal, me as well. Does Scorpio on the 13th sign share houses in the birth chart? No, Ophiuchus doesn't have a house. There's only 12 houses. Should we be looking at our rising signs and said, um, you should look at your rising sign to find out what reality you're living in. So if you have like a Leo rising your your reality is going to be like a Leo's. You're going to always be somehow put in the spotlight, even and you're going to want to hide because you have an Aquarius seventh house. But no matter what you do, people are always going to be looking at you. Um, so like that's just an example. But your rising is very important to know what your reality is going to be like. You can tell what your money is going to be like, what your what your childhood is going to be like, your mother, your children, all that from where your rising is and going around the chart. Um, and keep in mind, I do classes. So if you guys want to know um, about my classes and stuff like that, make sure you check out these links because I go into mad detail in my classes. All right, am I taking appointments now? Yes, check out my link tree. I'm doing them by phone, FaceTime. Um, how do we find our 13 sign? Um, there is a website. It's called Sidereal 13, I believe. Or you can just put it in Google and find it. There is a really good website. Um, I also posted that website. If you go to my YouTube right now, that Aries video that I did, I posted the link in the comments so you can get the direct link. Um, I guess I should have had it for this, but I didn't think about it. Uh, but that's a good place to start. Or you can simply ask Surrey uh, if you have an iPhone or whoever the fuck, if you ask them or you Google what constellation was, was the sun in on this date, it will tell you. Like. Uh, like I did for T.I.'s birthday today. His birthday is the 25th. I asked Sari, well, what day, what constellation is the sun in today? And she said Virgo. So that's an easy way to do it. And honestly, you can find out any of your planets like that. You can ask Sari what constellation Jupiter was in on November 1st, 1985, and she will tell you. And it will most likely not be in the same sign that you think it is. Now, it can sometimes because depending on the sign, like Virgo, for instance, is a is the is the biggest constellation. Our sun stays in that constellation for about forty five days, 
So it really just depends. Like if you're born on September 19th, you're a Virgo no matter what. Or if you're born on August 15th, you're a Leo regardless because those are bigger constellations. But then we'll be getting up into late July, we're looking at Cancerians. You know what I'm saying? It's a little bit of a difference. Try to learn more about the hearts. 12 houses, 12 house Venus doomed in love. I was told only attract abusers in situationships. That's not necessarily true with Venus 12th house. Uh, the Venus 12th house, the problem is, is they have a problem actually feeling like people love them. Um, and they also tend to hide their emotions. So there's a lot of self-sabotage. The 12th house is what we do to sabotage ourselves. So the 12th, really does, 12th house doesn't really have to do with the type of people you're attracting. It's talking about a lot of wounds that you have surrounding love for it to be in the 12th house. I know of the last person I was with, like before the guy I'm with now, he had a 12th house Venus and... You couldn't, you, he swore I didn't love him. He, you could tell, man, been fuck with this man for seven years, known him for about more than 20. You know what I'm saying? Done, did everything and you could for a motherfucker. And he swore down to the last minute that I didn't love his ass. And I'm just like, huh? Okay. You know what I mean? But then I was like, oh yeah, your Venus is in your 12th house. As well as his Mars was in his 12th house. His moon was in his 12th house. So certain placements, you just have to learn how to deal with it. If you don't know how to fix it, then... It's, it's kind of on you. Any thoughts on Libra in the 11th and 12th house? Libra in the 11th and the 12th house. Um, beauty. 11th house, if it's ruled by Libra, you want to do beauty stuff on social media. Um, but you might have issues with it because it's, it's ruling your 12th house as well. It's only going to be ruling one of those signs. It's only going to be ruling one of the signs. Even if it's... You always look at... When you're looking at the house, you look at what planet... What sign is right there at the beginning of the house. So it's Libra's only going to be ruling one of those signs most likely. Do you, August 1st, all Cancer and Western. August 1st is, is Cancer. The, the moon, do, I mean, the sun doesn't go into Leo until about mid-August, like 10th, 11th. And even, you know, I've even um, been looking at it and sometimes it actually goes into Leo later on in August. So some people who are like your 14th or 13th or 12th, they might have a lot of emotional uh, energy about them. Even though they are heavy Leo, they might have some Cancerian qualities, just depending on the chart. And another thing is a lot of people, what you'll find is you might have a planet in the sign that you think you are. So a lot of times like people are like, I still feel like a Leo. Well, I can see why people think I'm a Leo because I have a Leo Mercury. So the way I communicate, the way I interact with people is Leo. It's very Leo. My mother also is a true Leo. My dad was a Leo. So I have a lot of Leo energy. So I can see why people think, oh, well, you still come off very Leo. Yeah, I got a Leo Mercury. Leo is ruling, you know, my fourth house. It makes sense that, um, you know, I come off Leo. But in my son, when the sun, when I'm born, the sun is sitting in cancer. It's not in Leo. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, I always look at, I tell people to just kind of look at how we look at certain people born at these times. Like, um, you can see it, honestly. Like, me personally, I, I like certain signs when I look at it and I'm just like, how is Beyonce not a Leo? I just, I don't know. I, I don't see it. I can't see how people don't see it. But maybe it's just because my mind has been kind of morphed a little bit. Um, just I see the Leo and Beyonce all day. Like I just don't Michael Jackson. I just don't see how he's not a Leo. Like to me that you know when we look at the actual definition of a Leo, I feel like those two people take the cake. You know what I'm saying? Barack Obama. Yes, he's popular, but he's more of a feeler. Barack Obama cry every time he get on the mic. That's I see the Cancer in him all day. He definitely would be a dad to a lot of people in my opinion, more of a parent, very more maternal to me. Um, so I don't know, is it worth to learn both Western or Charlotte? Um, Western has its place, you know what I mean? Western, ha I, I, don't, I don't hate Western astrology at all, it, especially if you learn tarot, it would be good to have Western, um, you know, if you're gonna learn tarot because tarot is based off of the Western zodiac. So if you're learning tarot, then Western wouldn't hurt to learn. But I would definitely say if you're reading people, like actual people, for me, I'm looking at the 13 signs chart. Like if Kanye West came to me and got a reading right now, I wouldn't be calling him a Gemini when the sun was literally in Taurus when he was born. I'm not going to call him a Gemini. Especially when, if you ask me, Kanye West is one of the most terrible communicators 
ever. <laughs> he's a great rapper, but if you talk to him face to face or have an interview with him, he's not a good communicator versus a Kevin Hart or a Wendy Williams or these people who are actually very good communicators and know how to think on the, you know, very, you know, quick witted individuals, funny individuals. Those are the people that's what I'm reading when I'm looking at those. I'm not I'm actually looking at how these people interact and like I just don't see Kanye being a Gemini. Very stubborn, fixed energy, fashion, Taurus rules fashion, okay, beauty. Taurus also rules the throat. So this is why a lot of people say, Well, why are they all rappers? Why is Remy Ma a rapper? Why is Biggie a rapper if he's not a Gemini? Well, Taurus rules the throat, so and, and you'll notice that Tauruses are very truthful. They are blunt as fuck. Gemini's know how to say things and it's either going to be funny or it's shocking and they were like okay he said it move on Tauruses are going to say some shit everybody's like did they really fucking just say that yeah and it's going to be blunt and it's going to be truthful and they're going to stand on that shit 100 percent uh very very stubborn people you know so i just kind of just studying signs over time i can see these energies and people and i don't know it's just i feel like people are so attached to the sign they always thought they were so they're like i can see why i'm a gemini and i'm like i don't I just don't see Kanye as a Gemini, in my opinion. Kevin Hart versus versus uh, versus uh, Kevin Kevin Hart versus Kanye. Kanye's definitely more Taurus to me. Uh, Kevin Hart's definitely more Gemini. Uh, and then I always talk about Fifty Cent. You know, Fifty Cent, who I've never seen cry or or show any type of empathy or emotion. Maybe like once or twice, he's shown some empathy. They say that man's a cancer. I'm. I just, I can't see it. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, who's the better parent, Barack or 50 Cent? We're talking about cancers are parents. They're, they, they're the parents of the Zodiac and y'all are saying that 50 Cent is a cancer. Wendy Williams, who probably says some of the worst shit ever to people, is a cancer that has empathy. I, I don't know. I just can't see it. Because Taurus is ruled by Venus and Venus is emotional. Um, it's actually Oshun energy. Um, and Oshun is actually very emotional. If you read about Oshun or Aphrodite, Oshun is one of the worst Orishas to anger. If you watch Hold Up by Beyonce when she's fucking the cars up and shit, that's Oshun energy. Very emotional. Uh, so it's a sensitive sign. Very sensitive. Um, but, you know, in Taurus, people are not as easily to anger versus like a Chris Brown. Chris Brown is... He's going he gonna to come at you. Like older. Of course, he's more choring. And I always tell people the older you get the more you should grow into the next sign. You should start becoming more like your next sign the more you mature. So, uh, you know, uh, Chris Brown has calmed down now, but used to be, I'm pretty sure if you looked at that man wrong, he was going to have a problem on your hands. But Kanye's not like that. It takes a while. You got to keep fucking with Kanye for him to, to for him to explode like that. And that's how a lot of Tauruses are. Uh, they they it takes them a lot to get to get angered because that's Earth. That's fixed Earth. They're they're usually if a Taurus is mad, they'll probably have somebody do some shit to you for them because they usually have money. Tauruses are they're ruled by material energy, so they usually have money. It's very hard to find a broke Taurus. If you find a broke Taurus, they're probably not utilizing their gifts properly. Um, how do you find your moon sign in using the 13 signs? Like I said, you can either ask Surrey or you can go to um, Sidereal 13. They may have a calculator there or get your chart read by a 13 signs astrologer. That's probably the best bet. Um, but I will tell you, it's probably in the sign next to what you think it is. Like, for instance, people who think they have a Pisces moon probably have an Aquarius moon. Uh, like my moon is an Aquarius in Western, but it's in Capricorn in Sidereal. So it just it just really depends. My sun and rise are in both in the same time. I'm attached to my Gemini moon, but I'm a Taurus in Sidereal. My my niece swears she's a fucking my niece swears she's a Gemini moon, but this this girl is the grandma of all the children. Like she swears all her all her cousins are her babies. She be cooking and stuff. And I'm like, you are a grown grown woman. Act like a grown ass woman. I'm like, okay, but you're a Gemini moon. And Gemini moon people are very, unfortunately, it's a very flaky energy. And so when I talk to true Taurus moons and I'm like, are you really flaky? Are you changeable? Do you change depending on who's the in the room? Are you friends with one person one week and then not the next? No, they'd be like, nah, that's not me because you're not a Gemini moon. You're a Taurus moon. Taurus moon people are actually good with Reiki too. I always push them into Reiki when I see that in their chart. I go hard for my sign even though I don't relate much to the stereotypical Gemini. Wow, okay, why did people make a fucus? Sagittarius. Um, you can read it. The Babylonians cut a fucus out um, because they wanted a very... Um, 
they very they wanted a very uh even zodiac but also a fucus is a feminine sign it's the sign of basically women practicing their magic and doing their candles which a lot of patriarchal societies do not like women in that state this is why we had salem with trials and all that type of shit so a fucus represents that energy like britney spears is the best example of a fucus a woman who is very sexual in nature at a very young age usually a fucus women are um and then she was controlled by patriarchy she was put under a um a conservatorship and you can notice like as britney's getting free more sidereal people are turning more to 13 signs sidereal you'll notice that britney is the basically the personification of a fucus but i won't get into that conspiracy theory here that's a whole nother thing um my chart is nothing but fire and earth with one air sign. What does that mean? Um, I'd have to see what placements is in. That's the word. They are materialistic. I mean, yeah, they are. So sidereal different from 13 signs. Yes. Sidereal technically does not include, include a fucus. It does account for the correct zodiac. Like basically in sidereal, they usurp a fucus in Scorpio. They, they just put a fucus in Scorpio. They don't believe the fucus is a sign. So normally you'll see Vedic people are using sidereal. But there are some sidereal astrologers that use a fucus. So it really just depends. But 13 signs is literally someone who accounts for all 13 constellations that our sun goes through. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, it is a little bit of a difference. That's why I try to stay away from saying sidereal because that could mean that I'm not using a fucus. I don't understand what rising sun and moon. Rising is the sign that was rising when you were born. Basically, it's going to depict your reality. Your moon sign is what constellation the moon was when you were born. And the sun is what constellation the sun was in when you were born. The soul is your sun. Who is your soul? Who are you at your core? The moon is your emotional body. When people get to know you, they're more likely dealing with your moon sign. Why? Because the moon is the closest celestial object to, to us. So it rules us more than any other sign. Um, your rising is an aspect, so that's why you need to know what time you were born. Uh, and like I said, it's going to rule your, your reality. It's going to dictate everything else in your life, okay? Uh, just put it in a nutshell. Uh, Capricorn, Sun, Leo, Moon, Virgo, Rising. Um, I mean, if those are your true placements, uh, you would definitely be meant to be a teacher and someone who's out in the spotlight business make a business of being out in the spotlight and being a teacher um you were too flighty in past lives you're here to be more grounded what about leo mars in the 11th house um you need to do a lot of social media work you also would do well with putting yourself out in the spotlight your actual self like not just your hands you because you're because it's leo how, what if you're a broke Taurus? How do you reverse it? Uh, I'd have to see what's going on in your chart. But most Tauruses, when they're broke, it's a hit of laziness in it because Tauruses are, are hard workers. Um, I know everybody hates him, ooh, but Donald Trump is a Taurus. Um, these are billionaire, millionaire type people. They are, they're very strong work ethics. Normani, she's a new one coming up. She's a Taurus. Janet Jackson, these are strong workers. Uh, so if you're not working like consistently, and, and, and I'm not saying drive yourself down to the ground. If you're going to work like that, you should be working for yourself. This is why Kanye is a billionaire, because he believed in himself and he put in that work. So, um, yeah. How are Scorpio moons and sun and sidereal Scorpio moons? Uh, same, the same way. It's the same. It's going to be the same description. The problem is, is what people are calling themselves. Very secretive people. Um, Scorpio sun actually Scorpio moon people are actually going to be more secretive um, on the moon sign very hard to read very mystical people uh, but Scorpio suns are actually very optimistic it, uh, Scorpio it, our sun only stays in Scorpio for six days so it's very rare to find a true Scorpio um, DJ Khaled is my favorite one um, my brother is also born on the same day as him they're usually very jovial people um, very private as well um, but also dominant and if they're men, they're going to be uh, very much, I provide, I, I protect, I possess. Um, they love children. Very positive people and very mystical people. DJ Khaled's from New Orleans, so that's all I'm going to say. You know what's up with him. Y'all see what he be doing. All he says is his name on the song. He don't do shit else. I'm a cat moon in Western, but Sag and Sidereal, and I feel deaf. Yeah, that's my son. My son's a Sag uh, moon, so that's why his mom's a mystic, because he's, he's a Sag moon. So, yeah. September 14th would be a Leo, yes. The sun doesn't go into Virgo until about the 16th or the 17th of, of September. 
but Leo Moon, Venus, and Capricorn in the third house. Um, I mean, the Moon and Venus is a good placement, uh, but again, I'd say more in the spotlight, especially your communication. So you need to create like a podcast. Um, definitely social media, but the Leo Moon always wants to be in the spotlight, even if they act like they don't. Uh, Venus and Capricorn is a business as well. So, so some sort of communication business, especially with social media. What do you think about Aquarius Risings? Um, they could be attention whores because their seventh house is a Leo. Uh, like Michael Jackson is a true Aquarius Rising. So, and he has a ton of fucking shit in Leo. If you've ever taken my um, birth chart class, he has so many fucking planets in Leo, but he's an Aquarius Rising. So um, very weird. People think that you guys are weird. Um, one of my tarot students, uh, shout out to Miriam, she just finished up. She's an Aquarius rising too. So you guys are naturally going to be put in the spotlight because we've spent many incarnations in the spotlight because your seventh house was ruled by Leo, but you'll try to shy away from it. And you'll also be kind of ostracized by that. Like, for example, Michael Jackson had to be detached from us because if he ever walked in a supermarket, it would be shut down. He had no choice but to be detached so aquarius rising you're forced to be separated from people and it's usually through how famous you are um a lot of the times or your assets resources that type of thing yeah i'm not about to go into all these placements with y'all because if y'all want that y'all need to get your chart read my moon is in capricorn mine is in two what do you think about Libra Mars? Uh, that's a terrible placement. I hate to say that. I'm sorry. Uh, it just came out naturally. I hate to say that, but it's not uh, one of the best placements to have. Uh, Libra ha Mars hates being in Libra. Um, so I don't want to say it's a bad sign, but you do better in, in partnerships. Let's put it that way. The only reason why I say it's a bad sign is because Mars hates being in Libra. I didn't mean to say like it's going to fuck your life up or anything. I didn't mean like that. I meant like Mars hates being in a cooperative sign because Mars is me, me, me. So, um, you're going to, you do best in partnerships, period. Even if you want to be independent, your Mars, your method of going about life is, uh, in partnerships. North noted cancer, psychic, mystic, therapist, healer, teacher, mother. You're here to be more nurturing. You've been too business oriented and masculine in past lives. Moon and cancer, psychic, Taurus rising, business person, single mother provided for the children, very smart children, very work-oriented children, uh, business, spiritual business. I have a Taurus rising. My Western is Aqua Sun, Squirt Moon, Aquarius rising. True. Libra Mars in the eighth house. Well, you'd be a good sex sexual counselor, a good sex Kama Sutra. You do good with that type of stuff. Marriage counseling, helping helping uh, partners who've had like issues in their sex life. So that's how you can turn that turn that around. What do you think about Venus and Taurus? She loves being in Taurus. It's her favorite, one of her favorite places to be in the chart. Very wealthy people, if you know what to do with it. Beauty, getting into beauty, cooking, or domestic things. Music, art is going to make you money. No, no sense of being self-employed, and you are definitely a choosy lover. Your partner needs to have money. Can't have no broke partner. Aquarius and Saturn, he loves being in Saturn. That's his ruler, um, that he rules that sign. So very militaristic people would have did very well in the military. But however, if it's not retrograde, it's going to be hard for you to get structure. You, your, your, your challenge is structure and also group think. So technology, uh, like true Aquarians would be like Steve Jobs. He created Apple. So you, that's what you're looking at with Aquarius Saturn. So creating apps, technology, those types of things, cyber tech. Things that are, would acquire you to have a lot of structure, like building a company from scratch that's going to like help humanity. Also, humanitarians. You might have a tendency to be selfish, but you need to work on being a philanthropist with that placement. Yeah, you can get the reading recorded. That's fine. I'm about to open up different options for astrology. I just haven't had a chance yet. Sagittarius rising, you're naturally a guru. People are always going to look at you as a spiritual person. They're always going to look to you for guidance, preaching, that type of thing. Yeah, I'm going to post it on YouTube. How's knowing your chart help you with family, career, or love? Yeah, it's helped me in all aspects. I know I'm not meant to be monogamous because of my chart. So that's that ship has sailed a long time ago. Um, or meant to be in a monogamous relationship or monogamous at all, honestly. Um, 
makes me understand why I like women and men uh, from as far as my love. And also my Venus has helped me learn how to make money. My Venus is in Gemini. So naturally communication will help me make money. Um, my family, I know all my siblings chart to set one. So I understand all my siblings now and there's no point of arguing or trying to change certain things about them because I know their charts. It's kind of like therapy a little bit. Once you know somebody's shit, it's like, mm, my brother has that Aries moon. That's why he gets so angry about the video game and cusses at it and acts crazy. No point in changing it. He's got Aries moon. No wonder he's so fucking selfish. And it's in the third house. So no wonder he thinks everything that his siblings has is his because he has an Aries moon. Just let it go. You know what I'm saying? Especially my boys. My boys were having an argument today over their astrology chart. So that's been interesting. My favorite placement in my chart, believe it or not, is my Capricorn moon. Honestly, it is. I it's It's a terrible placement to have in a chart. It's, you know, it's hard to work with, but... Now that I understand it, it's one of my, my favorite placements I have in my chart, I would say. Um, and it's in my ninth house, so it makes me a little, it makes me really smart and snobby um, when it comes to like my intelligence. So I really like that. What do you think of when half of someone's chart is empty? Doesn't matter. As long as you have uh, rulers, you're gonna, you know, it, I can still read a chart. It just, I would have to see it, what, what side of it's on. So, you know what I'm saying? But it, there's there's going to be like Michael Jackson, for instance, most of his planets are in his seventh house in Leo. It's insane. It's it's I've never seen a chart like that. When I pulled his chart, I was like, oh, my God, like, OK, you know, so but it doesn't take anything away from it. I was still able to read his whole chart, you know, so it just really means that you might have a lot of karma in one sign than the other. Um, do you still have a service for reading birth charts? Yes. Do I incorporate the dashes? No, I'm not at that point yet. I do, I have had my Vedic chart read and it's actually, I love Vedic astrology. It's so complex and it's a little intimidating. That's why I haven't really learned it, but I do know a little bit. I do know my way around Vedic a little bit. Um, like I know my, my Nakshatas and all that shit, but I ain't at that point yet. Jupiter and Pisces in the first house. Be a spiritual guru. Be a spiritual teacher. Do you think boys, my, my youngest already has a tarot deck. So yeah, definitely. He was imitating me earlier. I have him on video imitating a damn reading, copying me because he listened. His his room is attached to my bathroom, so when I'd be recording up there, he'd be hearing me. His favorite card is the Queen of Cups. That's what he always talks about. So my son already has a tarot deck. My friend has four planets in Capricorns. Business oriented. Very business oriented. What about Venus and Gemini? I just spoke on that a little bit. Mars and Taurus, mili military energy, general, so um, dic big dictator energy in some ways can be a dictator in your life. It's hard to deal with Mars and Taurus energy because it's, it's very stubborn. It's very stubborn. Can't move that shit. Can't move it. Y'all, stop asking me about these combos, y'all. We'd be here all night if I answered everybody's combos, y'all. Y'all gotta, like, y'all gotta chill with the combos. That's a lot of, y'all have to think about that. That's a lot of people. Y'all gotta get your chart read. What about Venus and Sagittarius? Uh, Venus and Sagittarius is, um, you're gonna marry, most likely marry someone who's different than you in some way, culturally or age gap. They're gonna be foreign to you in some way. They're also going to help you get out of your comfort zone. Uh, so if you're trying to marry someone traditional, it's not going to work. And your relationship may not be traditional either. Usually Venus and Sagittarius, people have a non-traditional relationship in some way. Uh, Saturn and Aries, confidence is your karma. Being more, being less codependent. Venus and your partner's eighth house, very sexual relationship. Jupiter and Sagittarius, uh, that's a guru. Spiritual guru. What does it mean if you're going through your Saturn return? It means that you need to get to work. Um, you need to get to work. Because um, basically, you know, it's like uh, this is the time where you become an adult. You know what I'm saying? It's basically when you become an adult. Uh, between the ages of 27 to 31, depending on what your chart is, Saturn return is when you're... when. Basically, I always call Saturn Debo. Y'all remember Debo on Friday with with the with the bike? Saturn is like that, and he comes around about twenty seven years, and he's like, "What you got on my forty, homie?" He's like, "I done gave you twenty seven years to get your shit together. What you been up to? And if you ain't been up to shit, if you ain't about to put that work in, 
when you come out of that Saturn return, you're going to feel stuck. A lot of people don't, you'll see, this is why you see a lot of people having like midlife crises around like late 50s, like or early 50s. This is because they're about to have their Saturn return again. And that's because what they should have did at 27, they're now having to do at like 56. So you'll see a lot of people have that re restart in their life around that age is because that's their second rich Saturn return. Most people only get two, you know, most people only get two Saturn returns, but you could have more. Um, but you'll notice that a lot of people, it's if you don't make that, that change in your Saturn return, and it really depends on what your Saturn's in, um, you can be stuck between that time until the next one. You know what I mean? Um, but my Saturn return was okay, but my, my Saturn is retrograde, so it really didn't affect me as much because having a Saturn retrograde is like having a Saturn return your whole life, pretty much. You don't get the 27 years to get your shit together because Saturn retrograde means you already did this shit and you didn't do what you were supposed to do the first time. So he don't give you 27 years. You, you step in like, oh, here you go. Nope, you don't get 27 years when you got a Saturn retrograde. Nope, he already gave you that last time. You, you squandered it. So he don't give it to you again with a retrograde. This is why I'm like 30, but I act like a grandmother sometimes. And some of my clients are old enough to be my parents because I've, I've already done this before. Venus and Capricorn, how can I apply this to my love life? Business oriented people need date winter signs, probably Aquarians, more detached people, more business oriented people. Okay. What are some red flags in someone's chart? Mm, red flags in their chart? Uh, you'd have to put you'd have to put your chart with theirs to say if there's gonna be red flags as far as how that affects you. I can't say someone has a red flag in their chart. Uh, I mean, a Venus in twelfth house. If you're trying to date that person, is going to be difficult. But uh, or Juno in the twelfth house. That's going to be hard to date that person. Um, Mars in the 12th house, gang gang, will cheat on you most likely. Um, if they're not getting their sexual needs met, they and they don't have like strong placements in their chart to give them that uh, that resilience, they might just hop into bed with somebody else. So those might be red flags, I guess, but it really, you'd have to do what we call a synastry chart. And that's where you put two people's charts together and you look at how that affects, how they affect each other. When you have a planet retrograde in your chart, uh, it means you have to pay extra attention. It means different for different things. Like Mercury retrograde, it usually means like during Mercury retrograde, you get a lot of clarity during that time. Because when Mercury is direct, that's actually backwards for Mercury retrogrades. Mars retrograde, you have to work on your confidence. Venus retrograde, love issues. Okay, um, Saturn retrograde, just describe that. You've already, re you're repeating a life cycle with Saturn retrograde. Uh, Neptune retrograde psychics because Neptune prograde when he's direct there's a lot of mystical shit you don't see things for what it is but ne Neptune retrograde which there's that's a generational planet so we most a lot like people born around my age probably have Neptune retrograde so that's a really strong generation of psychics versus a generation that has Neptune direct those are probably like that's the um if I want, if I correct the baby boomers, I believe were retrograde or were prograde Neptunes, and that's where you're going to see a lot of drug use. You're going to see a lot of escapism because Neptune is direct. But when he's retrograde, uh, like our generation, in particular millennials, we call shit for what it is, and we we battle with our parents a lot because they are they were in a lot of escapist energy, and we're just like actually reality is you know. So those are the difference. Leo moons, uh, they need to accept that they want to be their mothers. Leo moons have a really big issue with accepting that they, they really see their mom as a hero and they want to be like them. I, I, I'd have a lot of Leo moons around me and they all resist this fact. I don't know why, but they're a, they're a lot like their mothers. Leo moons are a lot like their mothers and um, they do heroize their mother in some way and they don't see it, even if they don't want to. A lot of Leo moons, do, they reject the fact that they're like their mothers, but they are. And I'm talking about true, true Leo moons. So I don't know if you have it in Western. I'm not speaking about that. Uh, Saturn and Libra is all about balanced. They make great business people, great philanthropists. Uh, most, most like Bill Gates has Saturn and Libra. Um, also, Steve Jobs, I believe, has Saturn and Libra. And I want to say Zuckerberg also has Saturn and Libra. So that's th th those that'll tell you. That kind of gives you an idea of what I'm talking about when I say big business. Okay, really great business people. Also, philanthropists. You guys love to help people. <sighs> Rahu and Leo in the seventh house. Um, you're you're gonna have a partnership that might be 
uh, in the public eye or your partner is going to be in the public eye. You're, but if you are married to someone famous, then your relationship's probably going to be in the public eye or you're going to wind up being famous through who you marry. Sagittarius and Neptune is a healer or a mystic. Leo with W Aquarius, does that make us wise entrepreneurs? Double Aquarius as in what? Pisces moon, I wish it could be half a lot. She's super sweet. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a Leo moon energy. My mom ain't no joke. I don't have a Leo moon. My sister does, but shh, my sister's fiery as fuck. No games. Gemini and Saturn communication. You need to learn how to speak in public. Public. You need to be a public speaker. Scorpio risings make great detectives, spiritual workers. People are already gonna. People are always gonna think that you know stuff spiritually. They're always gonna see you as a healer. I've said Leo Moon a hundred times, so y'all just have to go back and watch it. Saturn and Pisces, you have karma in your spirituality. In past lives, you denied who you really were spiritually. You didn't go. You didn't go with what you wanted to do spiritually. So let's say in past lives, your family was Catholic, but you wanted to do tarot. You know, you'll probably have that dynamic in this life. Like your your family might be one re, one religion, and you want to do something else, and you're gonna have karma in accepting your beliefs or not. Saturn and Pisces are usually healers, though. Like Jesus is a healer. Pisces, Jesus is Piscean energy. So when anytime you think of true Pisces energy, I'm not talking about Rihanna and them, who's really Aquarians. I'm talking about true Piscean energy, like Janae, Akeo, and shit. Those are Pisceans, and they are naturally healers. People always tell their problems to them. Y'all late marches, y'all can say y'all Aries all y'all want to, but there's a reason why everybody calls y'all and tells y'all their problems is because y'all are therapists. Which is the best sign? I mean, there are signs that are, are more original signs than other signs, but I don't want to say there's a my best sign. I love I love Sagittarians, true Sagittarians. They're about some of my favorite signs. Uh, people born late December, early January. Those are true Sagittarians. I really like them. Um, I really love true Capricorns as well, like Oprah. She's a true Capricorn, which again is another thing I don't see why I have to debate with people. How do not people? How do people not see Oprah, the money sign, <laughs> as a as a business person? I just I, I'm like stop playing with me. Like y'all y'all just don't want to see that shit how do you not and even ellen degeneres let's talk about how do y'all not see these people as capricorns i'm not about to play with y'all like stop playing with me oprah's got a capricorn okay okay i'm just making that shit up she's not one of the biggest business moguls that have ever lived okay yeah anybody got time for that anybody got time and she's ruthless oprah's fucking cutthroat too she don't give a fuck Oprah didn't give a fuck that Kobe died. She like, let's do a whole special about his rape trial right after he died. Cutthroat. We need them views. She don't give a fuck. That's a that's a Capricorn. Y'all be calling them Aquarians. Aquarians. Y'all be calling them Sagittarians the devil, but it's really them Aquarians. Them motherfuckers can be evil. If you if you get them into some right money, like Kevin Gates, that's a fucking Capricorn. That's an earth sign. This is a totally different energy. Very paternal people. They're very they're the father. Period. Whether they're women or men. Meg the Stallion, that's a Capricorn. That's not an Aquarius. It's a difference. They, they, are very, they could be very ruthless. That's why I know Tori was in his feelings. I'm not saying it was right what Tori did, but Tori, you did that shit. And you know why? Because you're a cancer, motherfucker, and you can't control your goddamn emotions. You ain't no motherfucking Leo. You a motherfucking emotional-ass goddamn cancer. You Tori, you shot her ass. And I'm not saying Meg was right because Meg was playing with Tori's feelings. I saw it in the reading. But Tori, your emotional-ass shot Meg. Yes, you did. And I'm a cancer, bro. So I can see I can see it. I'm not saying it was right. But you fuck with my emotions enough, nigga. Yeah, I can see it. Luckily, I have a Capricorn moon, so I can chill the fuck out. The, the smartest sign, um, really debatable, uh... It depends. Uh, if we're talking about intellectually wise, probably Aquarians. Uh, and I'm talking about true Aquarians. Not, uh, like I said, them February motherfuckers. They're good with business, but they're not naturally the most intelligent. I would say Aquarians, um, or true, it could be true Sagittarians, um, because they're very well read. So it really just depends on what you're talking about. But true Aquarius people, like late Februarys, early Marches, they have really strong capacity to be smart because they have that, that, that big brain. Um, with, with you're repeatedly saying numbers, you need, you're about to go through a spiritual awakening, especially if you see 11, 11, but you can always look them up. It's different meanings for all the different signs. Retro, North, North nodes and South nodes are always retrograde. 
all the nodes are always retrograde. All right, we're about to do like a couple more minutes and then I'm gonna finish up. March 12th, and yet my grandmother told me I was a healer and I have a twin. Yeah, that's Piscean energy. They're great lover. Oprah is definitely a Capricorn. I don't understand how we have to, just, how do we have to even, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, Chris Brown's not a fire sign to y'all. That That's, he don't give y'all fiery, like, seriously. Y'all don't see that as a fire, like, come on now. Like, just, just entertain me for a minute. Like, I, I really be trying to tell you, so y'all don't see that. Give it his history. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't see that? Y'all don't see that man as a fire sign? Okay, well, I'll just be the only delusional one. I'll be the only delusional one. I'm a Leo, Sun, Aquarius, Moon, and Rising. Are we wise, are we wise entrepreneurs? Yes. King of Pentacles. She do. Ellen definitely looked like the King of Pentacles. In the, that's the King of Pentacles for real. Who is the sexiest or most seductive? Cancers. True Cancers. Like, um, or a Fucus. A fucus is actually the most sexual. I take that back. The most sexual is a fucus. Like Nicki Minaj, Trina. Trina. I got an ass so big like the sun. That Trina. Yeah. And if I and if I did, I would menage with him and let him eat my ass like a cupcake. Yeah, Nicki Minaj. Taylor Swift, she don't, she don't love him. She leave him. Britney Spears. Hit me, baby, one more time. She was like 16. Yeah, the fucuses are actually the most sexual sign. I take that back. Um, the most seductive sign are true cancers, though, like uh, Kylie Jenner or myself, because we're ruled by Ashlacia. That's a snake energy. So that sign tends to be more, that energy tends to be more seductive. Um, but I would say a fucus is definitely the most sexual sign, hand down. There's no more, there's no more sign that's more seductive than, or more sexual than a fucus. It literally rules sex, so, along with Scorpio. Like, Trey Songz is a freak. He's a true Scorpio, definitely a freak. What are early February? Early, Feb early Februarys are true Capricorns. No, they're true Capricorns. I already kind of answered that question. Chris is an uh, Aries. That motherfucker is a fucking... That, I know that nigga would smack the shit out of somebody. I know. And that's why him and Karuche was in there fighting. Because they both Aries. I was like, Karuche, you was in there fucking that man up. Don't lie. And Rihanna was fucking that man up too. Because Aquarius women, true Aquarius women, are not to be fucked with. Okay? Like, them late Februarys, that's Saturn energy. Y'all keep thinking that's Piscean if you want to. Erica Badu will fuck you up. Okay? She knows martial arts. Okay? Them women are not... All dainty, like Janae Ikeo and Rihanna, totally different energies. Janae Ikeo is a Pisces. Rihanna, don't fuck with Rihanna because she will kick your ass. I know she knows some sort of martial arts. I already know it. She looked like she will fuck your ass up. She looked like it. Scorpio Risings aren't freaks, in my opinion. I mean, they can be. They can be. I mean, they can be. They do have Taurus Seventh House, but it's going to be more closeted. They're not gonna be openly freaks. They'll be more secretive freaks. Gemini eighth house, uh, sex phone operator. <laughs> sex, sex phone, sex operator. Teaching about sex. Again, helping people with communication, couples with communication. Chris is, I don't see it. I just can't see it any other way. Other, any other way. Um, there's this book. I can't remember what it's called. It's, um, it's, I think it's called The Gate or something. I'll try to post it. I have the picture of it. I just don't remember what it's called. All right. Well, I'm about to hop off here really quick. I was just trying to come on here and talk shit for a little bit because I'm trying to get more into my astrology. I'm a little scarred because when I first got into it, nobody was fucking with it. So people were just giving me mad pushback. Like motherfuckers was like mad that I called that I called them they wrong sign. Like like I called them a bitch or something. Like I had Gemini's like, did you just call me a Taurus? Like like I done called them a bitch or something. Like hold up. I ain't call you out your name. They people act like I called them out their name back in the day when I first started. But now, luckily, people are more open to it, so I don't get as much pushback. But I do get, I do get some here and there. 
But luckily, it's just not debatable. It's not nah, seriously. Motherfuckers will act like I called him a bitch or something because I called him a different sign. It still happens. It still happens. People be getting triggered, and I understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, I try to tell them all the time. Y'all think I wanted to go from a lion to a crab? Yes, that's what y'all really think I wanted. Like, this is what y'all think I'm pushing on purpose. Obviously, I must really believe this shit or I really got some factual evidence for me to go from a fucking lion to a crab and be like, oh, yeah, I'm cool with that. Nah, I I resist. Like, it obviously, bro, I'm, my, my placement don't get no better. I'm not like, and honestly, I like being a cancer. I do. I, I, now that I'm like really honest with myself and who I am and, you know, my maternal energy and you know, the psychic energy and the teacher in me, the therapist, the empathy. Once I accepted that and I, I you know, like I don't, you know, I'm different than a, than, a, than a Leo. Like my mom, my mom is a fucking Leo. Like her birthday is the same day as Dave Chappelle. You know, Dave Chappelle is one of the most famous comedians ever. But again, some reason he's not a Leo. Kobe Bryant is not a Leo to people. Like, I'm not about to keep doing this with people. Like, Kobe Bryant's not a Leo to y'all. Like, okay. Okay. So why is he one of the most famous basketball players ever? Why? 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 It's not, I mean, he's skilled. Yeah. This motherfucker said there's no I in team, but there's an M-E in that motherfucker. He said there's no I in team, but there's an M-E in that motherfucker. If that ain't the most fucking Leo shit that could ever been said. I don't know. I don't know if Kelly Price. I think she is missing. I think she is missing. If, the, if nobody can put eyes on her, then that's missing to me. We can't post a video. Why the fuck are they speaking on her behalf? If the whole world thought I was missing, the first thing I'm going to do is hop on a live or hop on a video and be like, yeah, I'm here. I'm okay. Like, that's the first thing I'm going to do. Oh, they found her? Good. Well, if, they, if I want to see a video of her. I want to see a video. I need to see a video. When I see a video, then I'll, then I'll agree with it. But I need to see a, a, a video. I do, too. I don't like the fact that they ain't posting her up. Like, why are they not posting the video of her? That's creepy as fuck. All this technology in the world... I don't care where you at. You could be in fucking the Philippines, motherfucker. Hop on a FaceTime or something. Hey, sis, I'm good. Hey, your whole sister don't know me? Nah, something not right. I ain't going to act like something ain't right with it. It is something weird. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to wait and see what, what more. If she has COVID, that's cool. But at least you ain't dead, though. You can hop on. If the whole world think you missing, bro, I'm going to hop on a video. At least a 30-second video. Hey, y'all, I'm good. No need to worry. I'm balanced. Like, something. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers had COVID. Uh, Jeremiah, the rapper or whatever, the singer, he had COVID. You know what I'm saying? And we knew he was he was in the hospital. People was, you know, family was checking up on him. Like, ain't no reason for nobody to not be able to show, like, literal real proof that, you know, someone's okay. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm going I'm to I'm let everything unfold. I ain't going to jump to no conclusions. I just think personally it's weird that she hasn't checked, she hasn't uh, checked, jumped on a video, and it's been like almost 24, 36 hours that people have been saying she's missing. So I, I just think it's weird. So until I see a video, I don't know. That's just me personally. Yeah. So even if I'm beefing with my sister, I ain't gonna let her have the whole world thinking I'm missing. Even if I don't Facetime my sister, say I'm beefing with my sister. Be like, y'all, you know, I'm good. I'm at least hop on and let my fans know and the world know that I'm okay, even if I don't hit my sister up. Because there could be a reason why I ain't talking to my sister. That's fine. But I'm at least like, hey, this chick overreacting, y'all. You know, so that's just my personal opinion on it. I don't know what's going on. But I'm about to hop off here, you guys. I hope that y'all enjoyed these. I will be doing more of these, um, you know, just to keep going with it and, you know, sharing the knowledge. I do have a FaceTime or um, a FaceTime or a phone reading option on there, but I am going to add other options. I just have not had a chance. I've been so busy. So um, just bear with me the next couple of days. There will be more astrology options if you want something recorded, if you don't want to do it live. Um, but I do have something if you guys want to book now, okay? And just as informative as I am here, I'm lethal on the phone. I'm telling you guys, I would be on the phone with y'all for a good bit breaking down your chart. Anybody who's ever had a reading with me will know. 
I could do it all day if I if y'all let me. So I, I be having to stop myself sometimes. All right. So I'll talk to y'all later. Love you all. Thank y'all so much. It's been fun. Peace. Make sure you guys comment on this on YouTube. Okay. When I post this on YouTube, just go over there and leave an emoji or something. Okay. It will really help. All right. Bye.